So who better to introduce our new coach than his wife, Jo Ellen Tucker. Um, as Tom said, Jo Ellen has Big Ten ties of her own. She earned her undergrad degree at the University of Illinois and her law degree from Rutgers. Please join me in welcoming Jo Ellen Jojo to the stage. <laughs> this is yours, Coach, yeah, just so you know. Yeah. I'm not stealing it. It's, it's yours. Yeah. Great. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being so welcoming. And, uh, you know, we actually got engaged right here in East Lansing. So <laughs> that was a while ago. Almost almost 23 years ago now. So we're super excited to come back where it all began. And with all of our Midwest and Big Ten ties, we're so excited. And we can't wait to get here, the boys and I, and just become a part of the community. Everyone's been so welcoming already. And so we're going to hit the ground running. And uh, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce the fearless leader of our family and the guy that we just love to death and we would follow him anywhere. Um, New head coach of Michigan State football, Mel Tucker. Fearless leader, huh? I, I like that touch. Thank you. She's never called me that before. The truth comes out. Uh, Wow, thank you. Um, first, I'd like to, uh, like to thank uh, Athletic Director Bigman, uh, President Stanley, um, Board of Trustees, and all of the Spartan supporters who made today possible for me. I have prepared remarks, so I don't keep you here all day. When I don't write them down, we can go for a while. But. Uh, this is, a, uh, this is a special time for me. This is uh, an incredible moment. And um, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I'll try to be brief. I just want to touch on a couple, couple, of, couple of things uh, real quick. Three things, actually. Gratitude, responsibility, and loving Spartan football. The first is gratitude, and in that I have to thank God. It's hard to describe how blessed and honored I feel to be back home in Michigan State where I began my coaching, my coaching career in 1997 for the, the great Nick Saban. The outpouring of support that the Spartan Nation has shown me and my family over the past 12 hours <laughs> has been overwhelming. I want to thank many, many people. I would love to do that, but I promise I'm not going to wear you out. Thank you to the team involved in the coaching search. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. As each of you know, and I know that you respect, it was very hard for me uh, to leave Colorado. But thank you for never giving up on me um, and for your confidence in me to lead one of the finest football programs in America. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention the people who were 
truly responsible for me being here today, standing in front of you today. My family, My mom, Brenda, who uh, taught me to be a lifelong learner, and my dad, Mel Sr., who was a true football dad. Um, thank you for always putting me and my brothers first and for showing me what real love and sacrifice is all about. To my wife, Jojo, and my sons, uh, Joseph, who was poo, and Christian, who was baby. I'm sorry, man, I, I had to do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you are my true north, and you make it all worth it. Uh, the second is responsibility. You know we hear a lot about um, what coaches might have the secret sauce to win. You know, who they work for, um, what coaching tree they came from. Well, to me, there's no secret sauce. It's just people who taught me um, the responsibilities that we have as coaches. I've had, the, I've had the privilege of being mentored by some of the very best coaches in the profession, some of the very best. I can't mention all of them because we'll be here all day. But from my playing career with Barry Alvarez, the godfather, to working with Nick Saban, not once, but three times, and to Coach Trussell, Coach Jim Trussell and Romeo Cornell. These men shaped me. They shaped my coaching path. They not, they not only taught me the X's and the O's, but they taught me the intangibles of creating a winning mindset and a winning culture. The responsibility and importance of hard work Humility, accountability, and having a serving mindset, and to love the game, to love the game. That brings me to number three. You have to love it. You have to love it. Anyone who knows me knows that I love the game of football. Football's given me everything I have. And I love people who love the game. I love people who love the game. My players, coaches, uh, fans, media, if you love it, I probably like you. We play it, we coach it, we watch it, we cover it, because we absolutely love it. So today, I'm excited about Michigan State football, because I love football here, right here. We have a strong and rich history of uh, under coaches like Biggie Munn, Duffy Doherty, winning national championships, uh, Coach Saban taking us to the Citrus Bowl, and more recently appearances in the college football playoffs, um, the Rose Bowl, and three Big Ten championships. That's pretty strong. I love the positives of the Michigan State football legacy. I cannot be more fired up about being part of this culture. This is a winning culture and creating a winning future here in football. 
I'm excited. I promise you that we will do everything to prepare, practice, and play relentless and accountable football with toughness and integrity. We will do that. We have much to live up to and much to prove. And I believe the time is right now. The time is now. Gratitude, responsibility, and loving Spartan football. With that, I just want to say thank you again. Um, to all of you here, thank you. To all of our fans, and to the media who made it here on short notice, thank you for your time and being here to support us. Thank you so much. Without, all, without you, you know, we couldn't get it done. Uh, can't do it without, without you. So with that, with that, like I said, I'll be short. I'll open, I'll open it up to a friendly Q&A. At this point, for me, you might come both sides, raise your hand. Hey, Nettie, can you uh, hand me that water? Mel, uh, thinking back to 1997, over here, thinking back to 1997 and 1998, could you ever have envisioned yourself back here after this career you've had leading this program? You know, I hoped, I hoped. Um, my dream was to come back here and be the head coach. That was my dream, you know. When you, when you work for a guy like Nick Saban and you see him do it, you know, you can't help but to aspire to be able to be in that position one day and and uh, and do that. So uh, this is truly a, this is certainly a dream come true for me to to be back here. The time has gone very fast. It uh, seems like just yesterday um, that I was here. 400, 400 bucks a month as a GA sleeping under my desk. <laughs> I tried to always make sure that that when Nick Saban walked past the GA office, I was there, you know, coming and going. You could hear him, he was shaking that, that change in his pocket, coming down the hall, you knew Coach Saban was coming down the, down the deal, and I was right there at attention. So, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's special, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, and I don't take it lightly. Uh, I cherish this opportunity. Thank you for that question. Coach, over here. Coach, this fall, what should fans expect to see on the field? What is Coach Tucker's style? Yeah, first will be best condition. And that's the foundation of our program. Our program is built in the weight room. Um, we'll play with great technique and fundamentals. We'll play smart. We won't beat ourselves. That's the goal. Um, we'll play fast. Both sides of the ball and special teams. Players play fastest when they know what they're doing. And last but not least, you know, we'll, we'll play physical football. You know, it's, um, you know, that's really the name of the game. And, uh, and that's what, you know, that's what uh, Michigan State football has always been about. Hard-nosed physical football. Mel, can you, Mel right here. Got the same haircut. Um, I used to have hair. Uh, can you take us through the timeline from when Michigan State first reached out to you to, you know, finally agreeing I'm going to do this and just kind of take us through some of the details along the way? I'll do my best. It's been a little bit of a blur. But uh, uh, late, uh, late last week, um, Michigan State showed interest. Um, and, and, uh, and I had interest as well, strong interest. 
very strong interest. And uh, throughout the process, um, you know, I, uh, I decided that, that um, it was time for me to take a step back from the process. Um, and obviously, there were other great candidates, and uh, the search continued. Um, it circled back to me. Um, I want to say it was probably on uh, maybe Monday morning about that with, uh, with my representation. And, um, you know, ultimately, it uh, sometime late last night, um, it was apparent to me that I needed to be here. And uh, that's kind of how it all went down. Yeah. Mel, over, over here. Um, obviously, as you said, it's been a blur the last few days or the last week. Can you describe what you were wrestling with when you first seemed to commit back to Colorado and then came back to Michigan State? What, what changed there and what were you wrestling with during that time? Yeah, um, you know, everything, you know, has, has, a, has a process and I'm very deliberate about, you know, how I go about my business and how I, I evaluate things. Um, you know, professionally and, and personally. And um, you know, leaving Colorado was probably, was, is actually the, uh, the toughest thing that I've, that I've ever done in my, in, my, in my career, in my life, actually. And so, um, But this is the this is the this is the right time for me to be here. You know that's really what it comes down to. You know um, these the commitment is here. The uh, the resources are here. The the um, the want to. The leadership is here. Everything is here. Everything we need is here right now to get done what we need to get done. And so, um, although we all have to make tough decisions at times, um, this was certainly one of them. It was the right decision. Right. And, um, and there's no doubt in my mind about that. Right here in the middle, Coach. Anybody that watched you play knew you loved the game physically, but you love it as a student of it. I'm curious, this is the school that broke the color barrier. What does it mean to come back here and lead that program that 60 years ago changed college football? It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege, quite frankly. And um, I feel extremely blessed to have this opportunity and uh, we're going to make the most of it. You know, we're going to give it everything we have uh, every day. Um, we owe it. I owe it to myself. I owe it to my family, the players, you know, all of us in the room here, um, and all of the great people that have come here before us. Um, you know, great players in the past and great coaches. This is a, a, a program that has a, a rich and storied. Um, history and tradition of excellence, um, diversity, and um, it's, uh, there's very few places like this in America. Um, Antoine mentioned the, the uh, team meeting earlier and how intense that was. I was wondering what your message was to the guys that are here already and how quickly do, would you like to get the staffing figured out so you can start moving forward? Yeah, I mean, the message, um, you know, kind of in, in a nutshell is that we're all in this thing together. Um, you know, I have your, I have your back, you know, and um, I'm, we're going to support you, myself and my staff. Um, and it's going to, it's not going to be easy. You know, we're going to, we're going to work really hard. 
We're going to have a culture of accountability, uh, sense of urgency, attention to detail, unselfishness, you know, relentless attitude, competition, and it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Um, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it together. You know, every single person, um, every single player is, um, is important in our program. You know, everyone's got a clean slate um, at this point with, with me. Um, and we're going to move forward, forward from this point, you know, as a, as a, as a football team. And um, these guys, we, we need to graduate. We need to graduate our players. And we spent a significant amount of time talking about that. You know, first and foremost, you're here to get an education. You're here to get a degree. And we want to help you launch your career um, after football. And, uh, you know, obviously my job is to help you get your first job. You know, whether it's the National Football League, more often um, than that, it's uh, in the real world, and this is a great place um, to launch to launch that career. So, um, those are some of the things that we touched upon. Thank you for that for that question. Yeah. Uh, Mel Jim Comperoni, SpartanMag.com. What are your impressions of the way Michigan State has grown? since you were here on the inside in 1998. I was interested in your observations since you've come back and looked around a little bit. Yeah, I haven't got the, uh, the entire tour. It certainly looks uh, different than it looked in 1997, 1998. Um, it's, uh, it's very impressive to me. Uh, when I walked in, uh, when we walked in today, I, I felt, I felt, uh, I felt something different. I felt something special. I felt there was an energy. There was a vibe. Um, there was a uh, there was a uh, great. Uh, there was a positive environment that's conducive to reaching your full potential. And I think environment and expectations are the two uh, main factors in becoming successful. And um, the environment here is is tremendous with the support everyone. Everyone is supporting one another um, and the expectations, like we talked about earlier, have always been high, okay? And uh, they continue to be that. And so um, this is, is truly one of the, uh, one of the uh, great uh, coaching opportunities uh, in football. Steven? Uh, right here in the middle. Obviously, the timing was unique on both sides of this. I'm curious, uh, first, what are your, sort of your next steps in the next week or two, and are there any challenges of taking a job like this at this time? Um, again, what's just with the time? Well, you know, we have to put, the, uh, we have to put together a staff, and, uh, and I told the players, I can't, you know, I'm not, I can't guarantee that I'm going to bring in, you know, every uh, guru or, uh, some football genius, you know, X and O uh, guy. Um, we want to bring in, first and foremost, coaches of, with tremendous character that are great role models for our players, family guys that care about young men, you know, and we're going to, that are going to treat our young men as their own uh, children, their own, their own uh, family. And so um, that's, a big part of what we're, we'll be doing in the, next, in the next few days. And I can assure you there's no shortage of great coaches out there who want to be here with me and with, our, with the, these young men. And so, um, and then, you know, we, we're getting ready for spring ball. You know, so there's a uh, strength and conditioning aspect of it and a, a program of running and lifting and preparing ourselves so we can compete in spring ball. Um, and then, you know, I've got to get to know, I've got to get to know uh, my peers. I've got to get to know uh, my players, coaches, um, uh, everyone in our, in our university community here. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I embrace, um, embrace that opportunity. The, the challenges that, that we have, like I said, at this point in the year are, um, 
you know, we're built for that. And we'll, we'll get it done. It won't take long. We have two more, Matt and then Chris. And Mel in the middle here. I've only, obviously only been here for a few hours and you said this is, process has been a blur. Is it pretty much starting over from scratch with the team you, as far as what your knowledge of the roster is and the players and kind of the identity of what Michigan State football has been recently? I have some work to do um, in terms of learning our roster and and uh, and that's I mean that's part of what you do in a, in an out of season, you know, uh, scheme evaluation, player evaluation, just finding out what we need to do to get better. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, I t you, you know, listen, the, we want to hit the ground running. You know, this is uh, you know, time is of the essence. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to be efficient. We're going to be effective in everything that we do. You know, um, we're going to recruit. We're going to identify the players that we feel like can help us. Okay. And then we're going to target them. We're going to recruit them with the intent of signing those guys. And so you know, everything that has to, has to be done in a, in a, in a football program, um, quite frankly, has already started you know, for me. And so it's, uh, you know, we sleep fast. We'll be sleeping fast and, uh, and getting after it. We're going to make the most of uh, every opportunity we have. Last one, Chris. No, uh, kind of wanted to know, from you, you obviously worked directly under Mark D'Antonio uh, previously, both here when you were a GA, when you were at Ohio State. How much Mark D'Antonio is there in you and your coaching philosophies? How many things are different? And do you have any plans or decisions to make with his assistance that, that you're still on staff? Yeah, um, I was here 1997-98 as a graduate assistant. Coach D'Antonio was the secondary coach. And I left LSU with Nick Saban to uh, work alongside uh, Coach D'Antonio at Ohio State for Jim Trussell. And I worked with him for three years there. And obviously, um, he's one of those uh, great mentors that I've uh, learned a lot from, and he's helped shape, um, you know, some of my football philosophies and things like that. And so I've always considered him a, uh, a, a friend and a tremendous, uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendous football coach and, and a great, and an outstanding person. And so uh, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with him. Go green. All right.